Hello everyone, if you're watching this video, maaaring may tatlong reasons. Una, studyante kita, ikalawa, nagtitake ka ng action research, or ikatlo, napadaan ka lang. Pero bago yan, maybe you can just hit the subscribe button para nakaka-update ka rin sa ibang mga learning materials. And remember, it will always be a beautiful day to learn. For today, pag-uusapan natin kung paano mo mapo-format yung iyong action research. So, meron kasi akong pinaprescribe na different parts of this action research na medyo summarize naman na, lalo na sa mga secondary education students who are currently also having their practice teaching. Ang hirap kaya, nagpa-practice teaching ka. Tapos, may action research ka pa? My God, ang hirap nun! <laughs> At ito na nga yung different parts na pwede ko maibigay sa inyo para mas, kahit pa paano, mas madali yung ating discussion. So, we begin first with the abstract. And then, we have the introduction, the methods, the results and discussion. Then, we also have the conclusion, the acknowledgement, the references, and also the appendices. Pero, may mga ibang international journals na hindi naman nire-require yung appendices. Pero, para nakaset lang tayo, at makita na ating mga student teaching coordinators na talagang tayo nagtrabaho, tayo talaga nag-research, kumuha tayo ng mga permission, ng approval, kailangan maisama natin ang appendices. So, puntahan natin ngayon si abstract. According sa manual natin, ang maximum number of words for the abstract would be 400, but there are international journals accepting less than 400, merong 150 to 200, meron namang um, 200 to 300, merong 250 to 300. So, depende sa inyong pagsasabitan kung gano karami yung words na gagamitin for the abstract. Pero ano nga ba yung abstract? This is the summary. pinaka gist ito. It briefly but comprehensively describes the contents of the paper or the manuscript or ito nga yung inyong action research. Sa abstract natin, dinidiscuss din dito yung ating pinaka-problem or background na kailangan solusyonan. Aside from that, paano nga ba natin siya sinasolve? So, nandun din yung methods as to how you went about with your research. And of course, kasama pa rin po ang ating significant findings and also the conclusion that you can give to your readers. So again, ilang words sa ating abstract? Maximum 400. Ano-ano yung mga kasama niya? Andun yung problem. Andun yung methods or yung solution at andun din yung significant findings and andun din yung ating conclusion. Then, proceed naman tayo sa introduction. Siyempre, pag sinabing introduction, malalaman mo na kaagad kung ano yung problema. Kasi nga, ini-introduce na sa'yo kung ano yung problem. So, dito, what we have to do is you, you have to highlight the problem that is existing in the school which you are investigating. Mababa ba ang literacy? Mababa ba ang grade sa English? Hirap ba silang magbasa? Hanggang ngayon ba hindi pa rin sila marunong mag-spell? Okay, so dapat sa ating introduction, aside from the problems, meron din tayong mga background information that you gather from different experts, studies, or even concepts. Meron tayong conceptual literature na pwede ma-include sa ating introduction with proper citation. For now, what we're going to use is the APA 6 edition when it comes to in-text citations. Tandaan, anong citation ang gagamitin natin? APA, anong edition? 6 edition. Bakit nga ba kailangan natin mag-paraphrase? Una, syempre, para maiwasan ng ating plagiarism. And it is always a violation when it comes to research. Bawal na bawal, wag na wag gagawin ang pag-plagiarize. Ano-ano pa ba yung mga dapat nating i-include dito sa ating introduction? Of course, we have the statement of the problem or objectives of the study. Tatandaan natin kapag sinabi natin statement of the problem, this is in interrogative form. So, dapat magtatapos sa question mark. Kapag objectives of the study, gagamit naman tayo ng to or the infinitive to at yung mga verbs na gagamitin naman natin is more of the basic form of the verb or nandun siya sa imperative style of writing. And then, we also include the significance of the study. Para saan nga ba? Bakit nga ba kailangan pa yung action research na yan? Will that contribute to the body of knowledge? Ano nga ba siya ka-importante para sa school kung saan kayo nag investigate So, ayan, kailangan talaga may ayos natin yan. 
na i-highlight natin yung ating significance of the study para may sagot tayo sa so what, di ba? And then, isasama natin yung time and place of the study. So, kapag sinabi naman natin yung time, definitely kung kailan na-approve yung inyong research and hanggang kailan po siya na-conduct. And then, the place that is the school which you investigated. And we also include the theoretical and also the conceptual framework. Kapag sinabi natin theoretical framework, meron siyang pinagbasihan na expert. For example, si Sigmund Freud o kaya yung mga gumagawa ng different theories of learning. So ayan, yan yung mga theoretical frameworks po natin. Kung meron man silang drawing, figure, or illustration, yun yung ilalagay natin. However, if there is none, and you want to create your own concept out of your different readings, pwede ikaw ang gumawa ng mismo framework mo. Minsan ang ginagamit din siya yung IPO, yung Input Process Output. Pero mas madalas, dahil ito ay merong intervention program, meron kayong gagawin na action, ang mas nakikita ko is yung ADDIE or the ADDI. First, we have letter A, which is analysis. Inalam nyo muna, ano nga ba talaga yung problema? Saan ba talaga nag-uugat ang problema? At ano kayong pwede gumagawa sa mga problema ito? And then, you develop the program or you design it. Then, you implement it and then, you evaluate if the program has been successful. So, ADDIE, mas ginagamit din yan sa mga instructional materials. Proceed naman tayo sa methods and dito, makikita ninyo, naka-highlight on your screen Ito yung mga parts na hinihingi or ni rather ni Department of Education. So, first would be the proposed innovation, invention, and strategy to solve the problems. Kailangan nandiyan yan sa methods. And at the same time, the action research methods which include the participants, sources of data, data gathering methods, meron ba dito ang pre-test, meron ba ang post-test, kagamit ka ba dito ng scale, anong klase ng scale ang gagamitin mo or meron ka bang rubrics, Holistic ba to? Analytic ba to? And of course, how you treat your data. Gagamit ba tayo ng statistical tools? Meron ba tayong mean, median, mode? Or gagamit ba tayo ng chi-square? Ayan, so dito niyan yan, ilalagay lahat. Puntahan naman natin yung results and discussion. So, ayan na. Makikita niyo dito ha. Divided siya into four parts. Una yung makikita yung table number. Nakahanging indent yan. Ibig sabihin, kung sumobra na sa isang linya, yung second line ay katab na siya. So, you can just check kung paano nga ba gumawa ng hanging indention sa ating Microsoft Word. And then, the table itself. For our format, naka-all caps po yan. Yung mga nakalagay sa ating first row, naka-all caps at naka-bold. So, nakikita nyo dito, merong paragraph about table 1. Table number 1 shows that there are number of participants who are from this school while there are... Okay, so mapapansin nyo, it actually talks about the table. So, yung table na yun ay describe natin using that paragraph. Yun ang results. Klaro ba tayo doon? Kapag diniscuss yung table, kapag diniscuss yung figure, kung ano yung mga nakasulat doon, that would be the results of your study. But what is the discussion? So, yung discussion, i-correlate mo ngayon result mo with the other results in other studies. So, kita nyo dyan, may citation na ulit. The study of Elder 2021, ayun, nagpasok na tayo ng ibang research. Then, now, what we're going to do is we are interpreting the results of your study into a more general concept. So, ngayon, what are the differences between results and discussion? In results, these are organized according to how you presented the data in your table. Okay? So, pwede yung texts, pwede yung figures, tables, percentage numbers, or even photos. Lalo na pag-documentation yan. But your discussion interprets the results or findings more effectively by comparing it to what the other experts have done. So, meron na tayong panggagalingan na other studies pagdating sa ating discussion. So, I hope na iintindihan. Pag results, kinwento lang yung table. Pag discussion, kinorelate na sa ibang studies. Okay? Alright. Puntahan naman natin ngayon ang conclusion at isasama na natin sa conclusion yung plans for dissemination and utilization. Pero ano nga ba ang conclusion? Yung conclusions, ito ang nagdidictate ng implications ng ating study sa body of knowledge. 
Ito rin ay pwedeng maging basis ng other researchers in conducting future studies. Ito rin ang posibleng nagbibigay ng ating research gaps, lalo na at limited naman yung ating participants at iba yung ating mga pinagkukuhanan ng ating participants. So, you should clearly state the main conclusions of the research. Usually, kung ilan ang SOP mo, ganun din karami yung ating conclusions. Pero minsan, kaya naman natin ibigay ng mas general yung ating research conclusions. Para mas maintindihan, makikita ninyo on screen yung ating pinagkaiba ng results, discussion, at conclusion. For the results, you see the figures. Meron 90%, may 60%, at andun din yung word na participants. Pagdating naman sa ating discussion, meron siyang citation, meron siyang index citation. Tapos, nakikita dyan na sinusuportahan nito yung study. Pero, pagdating sa conclusion, medyo general na to. Nagkakaroon ka na ng panibagong konsepto. Tulad nga yan, nakikita nyo, naka-highlight in writing, male students perform a lot better than women. So, conclusive na yung ating statements dito, di ba? So, sana maintindihan nyo yung pinakaiba ng results, discussion, and conclusion sa simpleng table na ginawa ko para sa inyo. And then, we provide our acknowledgement. So, sino-sino nga ba yung dapat natin pasalamatan? So, siguro dito okay na yung isang paragraph. Magpasalamat kayo sa mga taong tumulong sa inyo to do your research. At hindi ito pasasalamat sa lahat lang ng family members or sa lahat ng mga kaibigan ninyo. Ito ay kung sino-sino yung mga nagkaroon ng contribution sa inyong research. Major contribution. And then you can also give gratitude doon sa ating school or cooperating school, cooperating teacher, the principal or the head teacher who approved the study. Second to the last, ayan, malapit na. Malapit na tayo matapos, lalagay na natin yung ating references. As of the moment, what we're going to follow is the APA 6 edition. Kanina, binanggit ko na to during our in-text citation. So ngayon, when it comes to creating your reference list, susundin pa rin natin yung APA 6 edition. So para makita nyo kung ano yung mga rules, basic rules na ginagamit for this, you can also check the link na nakalagay po dito. Nakalagay naman dun sa link na sinend ko sa inyo kung ano-ano yung mga conventions natin or rules when it comes to having single author, two or more authors, meron ba siyang ampersand, gagamit pa ng word na end, or hanggang saan yung period, naka-all caps ba o hindi. So just be careful in looking at it para magawa nyo na matama yung ating reference list. And we're down to our last part of your action research and that would be the appendices. So sa appendices, you are just putting here the different important documents related to the conduct of your research. Pwede kasama dyan yung approval letter, yung instrument na ginamit ninyo, yung pretest or post-test na kayo ang gumawa. O kaya, nag-email kayo sa isang rightful owner ng isang validated test and sumagot siya. So, binigyan niya kayo ng approval to use that kind of test. Papakita niyo sa appendices yung email and then yung approval. And I hope makatulong po ako sa inyo sa paggawa ninyo ng inyong action research. Once again, this is Abigail and have a beautiful day to learn.